Hi, this is John from Wellstronics 3D, and today I wanted to cover our reverse engineering process. What is reverse engineering? Well, here at Wellstronics 3D, what we do is we 3D scan items, and then we take that scan data and we put it into a program like SolidWorks, like what you're seeing here. So we're not going to cover the 3D scan data today. Uh, we've shown that with some several other videos. Um, what I wanted to more focus on today was the actual CAD and reverse engineering portion of this process. So what you see on the screen here is we have a small clip. Um, that small clip, it looks something like this. It's a little plastic clip that goes on a device. And what you're seeing here is a 3D printed prototype that we made uh, once we were done creating the design here. And so I'm going to show you the process that we use uh, and, and how we do this. And then towards the end, I'm going to go into some details and explain why we do it this way. So we, what you're seeing on the screen here, just so for clarification's purpose, this black gray thing, this is uh, the, the 3D scan data. It's, it's being presented in an STL format. So it's a faceted data set. And you can see that we were able to capture a lot of different geometry. So we use metrology grade 3D scanners, which means we're able to capture uh, detail very, very accurately. Once we capture that detail through the 3D scanning process, we import that data set into this program here, SolidWorks. And from there, we rebuild the geometry uh, of this scan data. We use this scan data like a template and we rebuild the geometry around that template. And then once we get to the end, uh, we're able to start measuring uh, the differences between CAD data and scan data. So what you're seeing again on the screen is the black gray stuff is the 3D scan data. The red is what we're going to call the, the CAD data. And I'm starting to go through some of these uh, features here to show you how we, we build this. So, so, excuse me, each one of these features has a sketch and then the sketch is extruded or cut to create the, the red portion, which is the features, the CAD data that is going to be used for the final process, which in this case is manufacturing some of these parts. So, what you can see is as we go through these features over here, uh, it, it goes very quickly in this video, but this took several hours uh, of design work to go through and do this. You can see that we start to recreate this geometry uh, using this software. And this is SolidWorks for those of you that are not familiar with it. Um, for those of you that are here, I don't need to explain any further what SolidWorks is. So here you can start to see that we are able to align the CAD geometry over the scan geometry uh, and we can start to compare how accurate this data is. Um, and then as we start to finalize this CAD geometry, you can see here we have everything finalized. So this is the final CAD part. So this is the reverse engineering part where we create the CAD data around the scan data. And how do we know how accurate this data is? Well, that's the next step in this process. What we do is we do a body compare process, which is going to indicate how accurate our scan data is, or sorry, how accurate our CAD data is relative to our scan data. So in this case, you'll see as I get through this process, um, you're going to start to see like a heat map. Uh, it's not a heat map. It looks like a heat map, but it's not, that's not what it is. It's actually a tolerance map of how far away from or how, how close the CAD data is in, in reference to the scan data. And whoa, sorry about that little, little mix up there. So over here, what you can see is we have the tolerance values that we're going to set this to. So we're going to go to, let's, let's use this as an example, plus or minus 0.27 millimeters. Um, so that's, that's roughly, you know, 10 thousandths of an inch. Uh, we'll use that and um, we can see that we have a legend over here and then we can start to kind of compare uh, areas that are maybe on the high end of the tolerance, you know, the blue stuff. But what we're going to do, we're going to do this one more time and I'm actually going to show you, we're going to get rid of this, the, the scan data because the scan data at this point, um, we don't need to see it. Um, so we're going to turn it off so you can get a true picture of how far or how accurate the CAD data is in reference to that scan data. 
So we're going to do this one more time. We're going to bring this down to the, the specified tolerance. Got to let the computer do its thing. And then shortly here, we should see only the CAD data. So there we are at the same tolerance. And we're going to turn the scan data off, and then we're going to hit OK. And what you can see here is we get, like I said, this heat map, or so to speak, it looks like a heat map, but it's not. It's actually a tolerance map. And you can start to see the areas uh, that we may or may not be within tolerance. So areas that are in black are outside of the legend. So those are areas of concern to us when we design a part. But then areas inside of uh, the, the blue and the red, everything in between that's plus or minus 0.272 millimeters in reference to that scan data. So you can see here, uh, we, we have this thing fairly close. Obviously, this area, what you're seeing is because the scanner couldn't capture that area, uh, scanners need line of sight, and it couldn't capture that data right there. So the data that this is measuring from is on the surface out here, and it's that's not the correct data set to measure from. So that's why it's black. But in this case, what we did is when we were designing it, we actually did a physical measurement. So we know that that area is correct. Um, but what you can see is we do have areas like this. We have this surface very, you know, very accurate. Um, but then we have this little area right here. And this, this was a, a, a molded part. And what you're seeing right here is a, a, a warp inside this surface. It's a, it's a sink, so to speak, because there must be some type of a thick spot right here that's pulling that down or it wasn't cooled right. Or maybe, you know, maybe it got dented. Uh, this was an actual used part, so we are capturing every single bit of uh, data that, that we can capture, and some of it we don't want to capture because it's uh, very dings, nicks, or dents. Um, but what you can see is we, you know, with this process, uh, we've, we've captured a very accurate uh, reverse engineered part here. Um, now, if you as the customer wanted the tolerances to be tighter, then we would actually create those tolerances even tighter. Uh, by slowly adjusting the geometry. The other thing I wanted to point out is that because of the way that we do reverse engineering, we don't actually copy the exact part every single instance. A lot of the times, and you're seeing it here, this side versus this side, when we design something, we design it on center and it has symmetry. And what you're seeing is that one side is actually uh, warped a little bit. So this side is sunk in. Uh, on the uh, in relative to the CAD da or scan data, uh, and I'll rephrase that from a scan perspective. On the scan part, the physical part, this side is sticking out on the physical part, and on the physical part from this side, it's it's sticking in. So you can see that it's warped. Uh, that that's an indicator that the part's actually warped. Ding, uh, a nick or a dent, uh, something like that. But in general, what you're seeing is this is a, you know, a fully reverse engineered part. So what would be the next step? The next step, if it's a small part, we can 3D print it uh, you know, for final verification that the part fits in its final use. We can uh, send out quote files for manufacturing. We can send you the step file so that you can do that. Um, this part can be 3D printed. It can be machined. It can be uh, molded, you know, whatever that final process may end up being. Uh, this is the state at which it's ready for that process. Now, if you're an R&D, you know, this probably applies to you. If you're in quality, maybe you're using this information to verify uh, exactly what we're doing here. You want to see if this part is within tolerance. So if you send us your CAD data, um, we can 3D scan it. We can lay that CAD data over the scan data, and we can actually give you a report that shows, uh, you know, the variances in all the different areas of the part. Um, if you're a designer, you know, if you're an R&D, again, you're going to use this data for that, or maybe you're going to design a part around this and you just needed uh, this for uh, a further design process. That can also be done. So there's there's a bunch of different ways that you can use this data. Uh, and, and one of the reasons why I wanted to cover this is why, you know, I'm going to ask you the question and I'm going to answer the question, hopefully, is why would you use Welltronics 3D as a service to do this. Well, when you get into uh, measuring organic geometry using a micrometer, um, a caliper, a pin gauge, uh, some other type of measurement system, it, it's very tricky to capture accurate organic data. Um, 
because the calipers measure squares, they measure triangles, they measure, um, you know, flat surfaces. And when you get into things that aren't necessarily flat, then those accuracies on those calipers start to become less and less accurate or it becomes uh, very difficult or time consuming because you got to take thousands of measurements to get um, an approximate set of data. You could use a CMM. The CMMs, you know, are probably even more accurate than our metrology grade scanners. Uh, but the problem with those is they're time consuming. You may have to build a fixture just to be able to measure the, the part in the CMM. Uh, and someone's got to program it, uh, and, you know, weeks could go by before you actually get results. Uh, and then again, with those results, the CMM, you know, depending on how many points you actually collect, those could be an approximation. So with our reverse engineering process here at Wellstronics 3D, because we do the 3D scanning with metrology grade 3D scanners, and we compare scan data to CAD data, um, like what you're seeing here on the screen, we're able to provide this data relatively quick. It's very accurate and it's very cost effective. And that's why you'd want to use us because we can, we can keep your timelines down. You can keep your costs down and the quality is very high. Uh, you know, the quality can really depend on, you know, you tell us how or what that tolerance is and we'll make sure that it fits that. So in summary, what I'm going to, the last thing I want to talk about here is the, the, the overall process again that we use. So, we, when you request a reverse engineered part from us, what we provide or what process we use is we 3D scan the part. That, that's where we get our STL file and our point cloud data from. At that point, point in time, we take that data, we import it into SOLIDWORKS, and then we reverse engineer the part by making CAD data from the scan data. And then we're able to provide the tolerance that you request uh, for that part. And then... Once that's done, if, if a prototype's needed, we can 3D print a prototype, send that to you for final verification. Or if prototypes aren't necessary in this, in this particular process, then we would uh, go through a final approval process. You know, we would send you the files for download. You would download them. You would verify them on your end to make sure they're accurate. And then at that point in time, uh, the process would be complete. Uh, and you should have all the data you need to continue with your process. So if you or somebody you know is looking for this type of work uh, and you want to, um, you know, reverse engineer a part quickly or you want to use it for quality purposes or design around it, look us up online. You can find us at wellstronics3d.com or you can give us a call at 612-587-2812.